All right, and they are flying into it. The drafting has already started, so let's go live to that. So this is Popo Please versus Team Tyrael. Map of choice is Garden of Terror, and we've already seen a ban come out on Zeratul and a ban on Kel'thas. Uh, pretty strong, uh, pretty strong bans. Zeratul being extremely powerful just with his Void Prison and the amount of damage he can do. And then also Kel'thas as well with current changes. That Chain Bomb is just devastating. So yeah, definitely he's has... pretty much currently broken at the moment, pretty much. He's definitely either pick or ban, usually ban, because he's just, he kind of just overpowers pretty much all the other heroes at the moment, so. He's definitely a strong pick. And right, we're going to see Popo please picking up Valor and, uh, well, their first pick obviously being uh, Valor. Oh, sorry, no, first pick was Jaina for Team Tyrael. Uh, solid damage, high burst. Obviously, they're going to pick, look like they're picking their assassins first. Very big contested picks in the drafting phase. So it's always a uh, sometimes a good idea to grab those assassins first. Uh, Team Tyrael, I think they'd be looking at um, right now trying to secure their support. Secure someone like Uther and maybe taking up. Well, we see Murden actually being picked up as the tank yep. choice for Team Tyrael. And Brightwing. Uh, Brightwing. Oh, it's interesting support choice. She uh, recent patches um, has received a little bit of a nerf. She did get a minor buff in the last patch, but she she's considered by a lot of teams to not be a viable choice. So it's interesting. All right, and they are flying into it. The drafting has already started, so let's go live to that. So this is Popo Please versus Team Tyrael. Map of choice is Garden of Terror, and we've already seen a ban come out on Zeratul and a ban on Kel'thas. Uh, pretty strong, uh, pretty strong bans. Zeratul being extremely powerful just with his Void Prison and the amount of damage he can do. And then also Kel'thas as well with current changes. That Chain Bomb is just devastating. So yeah, definitely he's has... pretty much currently broken at the moment, pretty much. He's definitely either pick or ban, usually ban, because he's just, he kind of just overpowers pretty much all the other heroes at the moment, so. He's definitely a strong pick. And right, we're going to see Popo Please picking up Valor and, uh, well, their first pick obviously being uh, Valor. Oh, sorry, no, first pick was Jaina for Team Tyrael. Uh, solid damage, high burst. Obviously, they're going to pick, look like they're picking their assassins first. Very big contested picks in the drafting phase. So it's always a, uh, sometimes a good idea to grab those assassins first. Uh, Team Tyrael, I think they'd be looking at um, right now trying to secure their support. Secure someone like Uther and maybe taking up well, we see Muradin actually being picked up as the tank yep. choice for Team Tyrael. And Brightwing. Uh, Brightwing. Oh, it's interesting support choice. She uh, recent patches um, has received a little bit of a nerf. She did get a minor buff in the last patch, but she she's considered by a lot of teams to not be a viable choice. So it's interesting that they've gone with that Brightwing pick. However, maybe they're going to play double support. You know, it's um definitely would be an interesting thing to see come out. Muradin always a strong tank. So Popo, please. So they've got the Valor, got the Felstad. They've got a reasonable amount of um, sustained damage there. But Felstad's um, Shock and Awe <laughs> is very much a uh, very burst-heavy ultimate. So Popo, please, yeah. really needs to pick something that's going to be able to secure those kills and lock people in place. Yeah. And they've right. banned Sylvanas as well on Popo, please, which is quite surprising. She's not too strong on this map, but she still is definitely a strong mm. um, specialist. So... Yeah, that exactly. It's um, you know, the curse effect is sort of like they um souped up version of her own trait. So I find Alfonso sometimes taking Savannah's, you you're not, you know, you you you're, you're double stacking a trait that she might not be able to lose, uh, use properly. However, it's still good. She's a solid ban. I would have liked to see someone like Zagara banned. Now, interesting choice here. We just see Johanna was banned out from our team Tyrael, which is going to has forced Popo to uh. Well, forcing them to take stitches. Like, it's not really forcing, but they've chosen to play with stitches and also picking up the Uther. I mean, these look like very interesting team compositions. It looks like they're going to be yeah. a lot of fun. We don't see stitches a lot in uh, proper competitive play. So to see them come out early on in the draft, that's going to be really interesting and exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, they've picked up Moradin and Joanna, who are two really strong tanks. And then Leoric was still open, which I would have personally probably picked, but stitches can definitely work in. He's really good for just making picks um, if people are getting caught out of position and can really like win you a game when it gets mm. to late. Yeah, he's the only trouble with stitches though. They don't have that. They don't have their tank potential. There's nothing defending them from a rush in. Yeah. So he's a great engage. I mean, that hook, if you can get it off, is a great engagement uh, tactic. You can pull people behind walls as well. So it's good in that regards. But they haven't got a solid line, unlike Team Tyrion that's got that mirrored and got. Even Illidan's going to be a great pickup as well in this lineup because they. 
yeah, with that stitches pick, I mean, I feel they're going to have to pick up another warrior here to um, just secure their front line. That might be their strategy. I mean, we we still got heaps of warriors on the table. If you look at stitches like a bruiser, I mean, you'd want to be picking up probably against actually against the dive from uh, Illidan. Probably want to look at maybe. Ooh, maybe someone like Arthas for his slow effect when they die. I mean, he dives in so he can really help peel off uh, Illidan because Johanna has been banned. So very interesting team lineups coming out straight away. Just been invited to the lobby. Alright, just setting up the drafting screens. Right. Yeah, it looks like Team 2 we have a pretty strong team comp. I don't see how Popo Plays are going to stop that Elodin from just wailing on to full set and valor. Um, well, the interesting yeah. thing is, is that Team Tyrion, I think Tyrion's trouble here is going to be the fact that they have no, they, they have a weaker support. Yeah, yeah. That's that's going to be the downside here for Team Tyrion is that they've got that weak support in the bright wing. Really good global presence, so she can get to the fights in mm. time, but I don't know if she's going to be enough to go against Arthas, who's got quite good damage, Felstad and as Valor, obviously Assassins, they got really good damage as well. Uh, Uther's going to be able to keep someone up with his Divine Shield, if that's the um, old uh, heroic he takes. And then Stitches, you know, that poison, anyone who does engage in, someone like uh, Illidan, is going to get the poison. It's going to really hurt him a lot, going to wreck him a bit. Arthur's going to slow him down, keep him in the fight. And yeah, it's um, it's going to be an interesting game. We've got yeah. Tyrael, Team Tyrael definitely has the more solid lineup for the moment, but except for that support pick. Yeah, I think, I think they tried to take Brightwing so that the other team didn't pick Brightwing and just completely counter Illidan. Hmm. That's, uh, that's my thinking behind it, but... I'm not sure if it's worth it, but we have to see how it works out for them. No, I don't think it would be too much of a concern, because they still have Jaina, so they still have that huge burst coming out of her. So even if yeah. Illidan is effectively controlled for the start of the fight, she can still go in and do a lot of damage. So, I mean, it might be, it might pay off for them. We'll see how it goes. But, yeah, it's, it's um, I think that's where Team Tio is going to come unstuck, and Popo is really going to be able to shine. Uh, still not sure of that Stitches pick, though. Yeah. We'll have to see how they play with it. All right, so we're getting into the games. Yep. All right, so it's an interesting thing. So Garden of Terror is the map of choice. If you missed it there, just indicated down below. Yeah, uh, this one will be looking at the team structures. I think both teams are about going to be about the same. Uh, again, Team Trio does have that cigar, so it's going to be a lot better for farming those seeds faster a bit earlier on. But, I mean, Jane is going to be good for... Um, area effect world farm i mean I, I don't think either team has an uh, besides general team composition advantage um i don't think any team has a better standing on this map than the other yeah obviously disincluding team fights because i think ooh, material should team material should just be able to come out on top All right, so we're just waiting for everyone to get in the lobby. Just waiting for one more member for Team Tyrael to join. And then we'll be um, off. We'll be starting it. All right, so Morden, what do you reckon? Who are your... Who's your team to take out this game? Um, I think from team comps, I'd say Team Tyrael. Um, it, it depends if they can deal with the Illidan, I think. Like, if... If they can kite back properly and just kind of shut down Illidan, I think they have a really good chance of uh, taking this out. We'll pop a please. Hmm. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to see how they play the team fights and how they rotate around the map with each other. That's it. It'll be very interesting to see how both teams are going to act. Because, like I said, again, this isn't a high-end, high-stakes tournament. We don't have teams fighting for millions of dollars here. This <laughs> is the first forte for the NZ region to really start building a hot scene, get some teams excited for playing. So it's, um, I'm looking forward to it, seeing the skill. These sort of games always surprise you. Like there's, yeah, some, um, yeah. there's some familiar names in the lineups, but there's no one f overly familiar. It's like, oh man, he is... They, 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 that five guys is such a good team composition. They're going to take this out. I couldn't tell you who's going to win this tournament for our, just looking yeah. at the team lists. I mean, it's going to be good to see if there's any players that kind of stand out that we haven't heard mm. of before. Um, so yeah, that would be good. I, yeah, because I mean, there's probably only two or three players in this tournament that I've actually kind of played with before. Mm. So it'll be good to see what kind of skill levels these players are at. 
see. That's it. Yep. See exactly what's coming out. So, yep. so everyone yep. are in the. Everyone is in the lobby. Everyone is getting ready. We excited, and we are just waiting for that magical ready button to be clicked by every player. <laughs> just one we, more to go. We can just get into this. All right, and Morton, as always, there are already comments about the state of your bed in the background. Yeah, <laughs> as usual. I don't think I'd be on camera today, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's your excuse for normal? <laughs> I just can't be bothered. All right, the match is starting. We've got four, three, two, one, and we are starting to load in now. So this is Team Popo Please versus Team Tyrael. It's looking to be the great fight. We are loading into the Garden of Terror. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just the anticipation for um, what this first... I mean, because this is the first game of the tournament. I mean, really, this is going to set a bar for what we see for the rest. So this is best of... For those just tuning in, it is best of three. So whoever loses this does have another chance to stay in the winner's bracket. And then if they do lose, it is double elimination, so that we'll be pushed down to the loser's bracket, where, again, it is another best of three. And um, We've made up for the all games of best of one, except for... Oh, okay. Um, Round Changes. three of the winners and the grand final. Okay, so all games are best of one? Yeah, except for the final. All right. Well, we do. I'll change that now, guys. Yeah. It is best of one. This is Popo and Tyrael fighting to stay <laughs> in the winner's bracket. The last chance. <laughs> last chance to be a winner. Or we'll drop down to the loser's bracket. But we'll see. So we are starting now. So... Yeah. So we're just setting up the final bit of the overlay to get into the game. And right, and here we are. We are in Garden of Terror on the left side of the map. We should have Team Tyrael, where we've got Obla Bobla playing Illidan. Bright wing as is Element Zero. Zagara is Mondas. Mordin is Mr. Split, Split ZNZ. And Jaina is Vince J.O. And on the right side of the map, for Team Popo, please, we have a Blocky playing as Stitches. Arthur's playing as Fiery. It's fairly fiercery, sorry. Dear Devil Dan as Felstead. Valor is Dasm. And Kathena. Kathena. Kathaya? This is Uther. <laughs> Terrible with names. Yeah, so it looks like Valor's going to be going for a W build as well this game, which is good because quite often you fight in t tight areas, so it's going to deal a lot of damage in areas. And since you're going to be able to spread out damage a lot. Yeah. But we're not going to see any hunging arrow for anyone retreating. Meriden has gone in against Falstad. Illidan dives in, but Falstad is going to dash out, surviving to continue the fight early on engagement. Go to the top lane. We do have Brightwing and Jaina versus Valor and Uther. In the middle, we're seeing another double lane where we got Illidan, versus, uh, Illidan and Meriden versus Stitches and Falstad. And in the bottom, we have a Zagara versus Uther. Oh, sorry, Arthur's fight, I should say. Mm. I'm quite surprised that they said Arthur's uh, bot lane because usually in bot you want to kind of have your ranged or your mm. pusher specialist like Zagara for example. I would have personally had Fullstead go bot because he'd be able to deal with Zagara a lot better than Arthur's but uh, looks like Zagara's not really poking him down too much. Oh, it looks like Illidan's like rotating up to the top. Actually, no, changing lane. Looks like it might be changing lanes with Jaina. Thought yeah. he might be able to dive and get a um, go on Uther. He does dive in. Not much is going to happen here. He's just going to push Uther back. Polymorph comes out from Brightwing. Oh, Falstad comes up the top for a little bit of assistance. And we are now in the night phase. Seeds are going to start to be collected by both teams. Ooh. All right, so we look in here. Popo has actually done a really good uh, really good job now. They're actually split, and they're collecting seeds from both top and bottom of the map. Yeah. Um, yeah. Team Terry have sent four top um, strange and left Zagara bot on her own. Zagara is really good for clearing them, but she can't really 2v1. Which is unfortunate for her. So it looks like uh, Popo, please, will get ahead in the seeds. That's it. For and the so, time being. Well, right now, they shouldn't be able to pick up a Terra from this. So if they do want to get Terra first night, they are going to have to rotate up to the top. Yeah. But we just see that uh, Team Terra have only just started their top night, the night Terra. So Popo is actually going to have an opportunity to come in and steal some seeds right at the end and pick up their Terra. Ooh, they do need... Well, oh, no, they did have enough, actually. Yep. Sorry, I mis miscalculated how many seeds come off both of them. Yeah, right, Popo we'll... Please actually rotated that really well, I feel. They kind of just played the map. I wouldn't say perfectly, but they definitely outplayed the other team for this first objective. 
Well, that's it. Leaving Zagara by herself to do seed farming when yeah. there was two to three members of Popo Police around the area wasn't quite the smart thing. We do see Illidan diving into the Valor, but no sort of big engagement. Oh, big hook on Illidan just then from Stitches. But Illidan's no. a bit too slippery for him, though. Yeah, that's it. And the Garden Terror is coming out, going to drop and run down the center lane. We're going to see a little bit of engagement. Falstad coming in. And it looks like uh, Popo is going to choose to push behind with this Terror and get a lot of early damage on this middle, middle fort. Just waiting for either team to really engage now. Hook oh, goes on Jaina. Jaina's in the bad a situation. Thumb comes out from Utha. And Jaina is going to fall. Really First nice hero to catch. die in this engagement. And then Mondos is in a bad situation as well. And he'll have to back out. Falstad dashes in to get the kill with the uh, Garden Terror scene there as well. And this is a little bit of a bother for uh, Team Tyrion. They are going to be pushed in. Uh, to see a lot of players on low health. Blocky having to back out. And now we're just seeing that Garden Terror just get to work on that middle fortification straight away in, in this game. Ooh. Yeah, that Stitcher Sick was really well played, especially on Jaina as well, who has no mobility at all, and she's not getting out from that team. Mm. That was really well played by Stitches. Yeah, it was a, it was a great hook. And now we're going to see the Garden Terry is about to fall, and he's doing a good job here. He's 15 seconds left, but he's going to rotate to the top. See probably a final seed fall down before he drops down before he goes. Chuck down old Blah Blah. There we go. And putting it behind the gate. Got to make sure he can get out of here, though. Yeah, that's it. It is uh, it is fiery, which is Arthur, so he should be fine. Yeah. Oh, they can actually turn. Them. Oh, no, that's going to be huge, huge play there. Just didn't quite have the yeah. damage fall up. They've still got uh, full stand stitches soaking bot and mid as well, so mm. they're just going to be keep getting an XP lead, which is really well done by them, while they're 3v4ing top. Yeah, that's it. We definitely, uh, Team Cheryl here needs to rotate to the organs, needs to go to these other lanes, start sucking experience again. Oh, Mondos is in a bad spot, and he's going to get taken out from this. Look at those body blocks coming out of Blocky yeah. there. That's obviously Blocky by name, Blocky by nature. And the double worry is just body blocking Zagara to death. That's it, yeah, that was a bad situation for Zagara to try and retreat in that direction. That was another good play there by uh, Popo, please. They uh, may have, they may consider to have a slightly different lineup, but they're definitely at, um, paying off for them. Oops. Oh, that just clicked out of the game for half a second there. And Illidan was in a little bit of spot of bubble. Bother and has to back yeah. out. Right wing should keep him. Oh, that's another oh, good hook. I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this. Oh, he might be able to just survive as long as that uh, yeah. the chain oh, doesn't come Brightwing out. Brightwing's right coming in. But, I mean, I mean, that's the biggest trouble right, with Brightwing right there is that she's teleported in, she's there to support, but she just can't get any heals off straight away. I mean, that's that's the biggest issue with Brightwing right now. Yeah, not until, yeah, because I mean, her heroic is uh, blink heal, but. Compared to other healers, it's the numbers just aren't really there at the moment, so... That's it. Alright, so we're going to see we're going to see Popo start to pick up their hard camp at the top. This is going to put a lot of nice pressure onto that top lane, especially with the Garden Terrors, with the seed farming stage, about to start right now. We'll be really interested to see if they try and split up here, or they try and punish Team Tyrion and prevent them from getting their own Garden Terror in this night phase. We'll just see how they're going to play off behind this. Yeah. That top lane looking very, very da dangerous at the moment. Not only, not only are those um, mercenary camps pushing the top lane, they just hit a natural minion wave as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be extra pushing in that top lane. Now we do see the Garden Terror is being picked up for uh, Team Tyrael. Well, they've got enough seeds, and Jane is going back to pick it up. They're also really close to level ten, so uh, Team Tyrael will really struggle to contest anything mutual. Once they get their heroics, well, that's it. Not even, not just that uh, Popo is close to level ten, but they've got, a, they're going to have a two level advantage in a moment. Uh, Tyrael can't do any engaging, and even with this um, Garden Terror picked up now, I mean, Popo is just going to burst that thing down into oblivion. It's yeah. um, they're going to not really get any great value out of it. And we've had Illidan they, and Brightwing have to rotate to the top lane to defend yeah, against that push. Yeah, they need to leave this bottom terror, or they're going to get caught. Unless okay. they were just going to the. Um, Sorry, the human terror, I guess. <laughs> well, we see a Vince J.O. Oh. on um, Jaina is just unfortunately getting punished um, right now. The team can't really... Well, the team's not supporting her, yeah. supporting them at all. And they're yeah. just going to lose that terror, a wasted terror. And they're not going to get their own terror. Like, Popo won't pick up their own terror because they're not trying to steal any seeds. But, I mean, hey, you cancelled yeah. an enemy terror. What are what the best... Yeah, and then they all they need to get is five seeds next nightfall, and then they can just pretty much control the map with the terror. That's it. Because Team Terror aren't going to be able to. They they either get their own seeds or they stop it, and I don't think either of them of them will be worth them really. 
Yeah, that's it. And Jaina. it's here taking. Oh, this is a bad spot for Jaina. Yeah. Bocky's going in. Yeah, well, his entire team's going in, but Bocky <laughs> is there to make sure she can't escape in any way. Now, that was just a bad positioning on the Atera's part. Yeah. Popping out. She could have had nowhere to run and just being taken out. Popo is definitely playing this in a much. It's been playing a much better game right now. Yeah, but... they're playing a lot more coordinated, really. They're going to pick up this easy siege. Again, there's going to be more pressure in that mid lane. We're going to have to see. Again, Tyrion's going to have to have to respond. Well, actually, we do see the level 10 being picked up for Team Cheerio now. So we'll just quickly run through it. We see like, Metamorphosis for Illidan, Blink Heal for Brightwing. See more picking up for Zagara. And Brightwing's actually taken out while I was looking at the traits there. And we're going to see Kiel go on Valor. Bit of a yep. vengeance for Watch our Team Tyrion. It's not too worth a Valor, because if you're um, down in XP, then when you get a kill, you get a lot more XP than the other team, so... Yeah, that's all the Metamorph... Like that is what Team Tyrion Uther's been taken out. Metamorph's gone ill. Oh, Arthur's in a bad position. He's going to have to run out as the Maul goes in, trapping, I believe that was Stitches. This is a potential kill. No, they aren't able to block it in. Soon as goes out. Oh, God, Zagara is taken out. We're going to see Team uh, Popo just turn this back onto a Tyrion. They're going to see Arthur's in a bad situation now, trying to back out. Doing a little bit of sippy cup heal. However, Muradin is going to be pulled in by Stitches and just punished for their aggressive plays. There's obviously an engagement that came off much better just then. For, oh, another engagement actually going on. And yeah. we're going to see Brightwing pop in this situation. And Illidan will fall as well. That was such a bad thing for our Team Tyrion then to turn around. They knew all five of the enemy was there. That's a bad decision. And this is going to be starting. You know, this is the beginning of the snowball here. We now yeah. have a talent difference. This is a real talent difference now coming out for both team, for, sorry, for uh, team Popo. And they're just going to be able to press here. They could take this top fortification and there is nothing that uh, Tyrion will be able to do about it. Alright, and, and they have started doing it. So the rest of Tyrion is up. And they're going to try and come engage on this, but we're going to see Popo. Oh no, this oh, another good, hook. good chain, but it is bright when she will be able to get away from it. Bella has popped her ultimate. Going to do a little bit of work, but going to get no real kills from it just yet. And now she's not going to have it up for possibly the next engagement. But Tyrion's being so aggressive here. They don't have the levels to fight. They don't have the talent to fight. And Arthas goes in. He does his um, roots in place. Muradin's in a bad situation. Stun comes out. Jaina is trying to burst down, but it's not going to be enough. And Muradin is taken out. And the rest of the team, Tyrion, just has to back away. Another, uh, another bad situation for them. Choosing to stay in that top lane when really they've got to be focusing on experience gaining. Yeah, yeah they, definitely. I said, Illidan, they're going for the easy camp. Bad situation because they can't see Popo anywhere on the map. A bit too late, however, they still got the easy camp. Illidan goes in, but look at this. We're going to see. Ooh, great Maul picking up both the yep. tanks for Popo, but they really should be disengaging from this because they're out now, and Sagara has just been punished. The Sins Grosser comes out. We're going to see all the ultimates used. Oh, a lot of the ultimates start to be used, I should say. And yeah, look at this. Popo is just cleaning up. Illidan being too aggressive, getting killed early on. The hook going in. Doesn't matter who it captured, they would have died anyway, because none of them's got very solid escapes. And that's it. Look at that. Three dead. Yeah, Three dead um, for Team, team Terrio on. They're kind of dying one by one, whereas Popo Please are really kind of coordinating and going mm. in as kind of a, like a whole group, a big yeah. block of just heroes. So they're playing this really well, especially with Stitches as well, who can just make such easy picks. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's... That, that fight just then, so they captured the Siege Giants, the fight engaged, they didn't have... Muradin wasn't at the front line. It was Arthas and then Zagara. Zagara threw down a great maul that captured Sisters and Arthas. That was an opportunity for Team Tyrion to back out, to get away in that fight. But instead, they chose to hang around, try and, try and push the fight, which was bad in the situation, because again, they don't have the level advantage, don't have the talent advantage. I mean, they just going to get back into the same talent bracket, but then they're going to lose again almost instantly. Yeah. So we do see, see uh, the red teams or Popo's Garden Terror uh, doing a great job just harassing on the map. We're going to see the rest of our team Tyrion followed around. But look at that. He's about to die and he's going out into a safer position that he can run away from. Run away, uh, run away from. So we've got 40 seconds. He can throw down a final C. We're going to see that. Oh, actually no, he's Maybe he's just been a bit too greedy. It is Arthas. He might yeah. be able to walk away, but I doubt it. He has been stunned, and that is Arthas is killed. So another um, <laughs> potential bad decision-making with the Terra. 
However, he did a lot of work, so you know, maybe yeah. it's worth it. And they, it did allow them to get the bottom tower as well, so yeah. they've got 160 seeds at the moment, so... Yeah, that's it. So that's worth. Well, they're going to have another terror in a moment, and they're really going to be able to push right into this. Alright, so there's a little bit of engagement on the bottom. Mole's been gone down. Great Mole. Uzzes in a little bit of spotted bowl. The Vine Shield has been used, but he will just walk away. A little bit of uh, Bocky's going in. Dan, Daredevil Dan might be on low health. He's going to get away. Oh, but Blocky's on low health now. Heal comes out. He, he will. Is he going to fall? He does fall. Uh, Team Chiro picking up a Big kill, but lost. look at that. Shocking awe from Falstad. Just going through and annihilating Mer uh, sorry, um, Zagara and just punishing the rest of the team. Oh, they don't want to re-engage from this. Even though it's a 3v1, they oh. still... Sorry, 3v4, I should say. Look at that. Right wing dead. Daredevil Dan's now going to be a little bit punished, but he dashes out of the uh, Blizzard just in time. And I think Jaina... Oh, Illidan or Jaina. Oh. Oh, Illidan's picked off, punished, mirror then stunned. And just another strong engagement for Team Popo. Yeah, Forstad had played that really well. Like, he, even though there was only, it was 3v4, he knew he was low and that they weren't going to just turn on him and kill him instantly. So he played that really well and managed to get two kills from that. Yeah, that's it. It was very, very, very smart plays. And, I mean, again, I mean, Tyrael just needs to back away out of those fights. And they were able, you know, Popo could do that because they had the level advantage. They had the talent advantage and level advantage that they can go into fights like that and be confident that they're going to come out on top. Yeah, definitely. And Usha played it really well as well with Valor. While mm. Fullstead and Stitches were in the moor, uh, Valor yeah. was able to get off her strafe with the uh, Divine Shield. So mm. Team Tyrael couldn't really capitalize on the moor because there was like no one they could kill really. So that yeah, was really well played it. as well. I mean, that's just goes to show you know, I think Tyrion taking... Ooh, oh, that's a great hook on Zagara. Zagara's going to get captured, and she's dead again. Taken out instantly. That hook just being too powerful for him. The Polymorph has, go on, has gone on to uh, Meriden. Oops, just hit the microphone. <laughs> Still getting used to it. And Meriden will survive. Get out of that. I mean, that, I that, that's... Well, it's, sorry, you go. No, that's right. That's just... Just saying, that's how exciting... That's, that's how uh, good this match is getting exciting. Moving around and hitting the microphone. Hopefully it wasn't too loud for everyone. All right, and look at that fire sea is on, is on the run as uh, as the Garden Terror has been died a little bit, but it is Arthur's taking it. I mean, they're doing a really smart play, putting one of their own bruises into it. The Vine Shield went on Uther. That was a uh, sorry Arthur. That was a little bit early on the play. Jaina being taken out. Oh, was it Bright Wings on low health? She oh, I saw the oh the mole. Look at that oh. massive mole capturing two enemies. That's a lot of the damage gone for Popo. But really, it's not going to be enough because they're not going to be able to burst down any of the opposition. They needed to back away from that fight. Valor might be punished, but instead, uh, Illidan is for diving oh. too far. Another massive Syndra goes to end. Turn and all. another fight. They really need to be following up on the moors as well. Like, it was a very good uh, two-man moor there. But Sagara mm. and everyone have backed off, even though Illidan pretty much had the whole enemy team's attention. Yeah, ex exactly. And it's they're just... They're just... Yeah, they're just not... They're using their ultimates and they're getting good individual moves off, but they can't really come together. Mm. So we're just gonna have to see. See if they can end here. They're quite low, so we'll see if they can get a like a last minute base defense. I think all it will really do is delay. Well, I mean, you see, Inevitable. Popo has backed off. I mean, there we go, I've backed off. They're not They're not going to hang around, they're not silly. They got a little bit of damage onto that core. And we, they've got catapults coming down the mid and bottom lane. So that's going to be a lot of pressure against Team Tyrael. They've got four level advantage. And they're just going to be able to go ahead and soak up these seeds. Yeah, but it was very smart of them to back off there. Because, I mean, they've got such a big lead and they're so close to Terra. Terra can pretty much finish on its own at this point if his team just kind of defend him. Hmm. So All right, so we've got a little bit of engage going on. We do see the Haymaker pushing back the uh, Team Popo. But the old run goes in. Val uses their ultimate. Syndra goes, goes down. And they are just picking off the enemy team. Tyrion not being able to do anything against it. And Jaina is going to be the only one that lives, does back off. And Popo is just going to continue to pick up these seeds in this night phase. I mean, we might be looking at, or well, we are looking at 200 seeds picked up. We're going to be looking at two back-to-back -back Garden Terrors with an exposed core. I think it's safe to say that uh, Popo, please has this game in the bag from the spot. Yeah, I don't think there's a way back for Team Tyrael here. I mean, Popo Please have been ahead pretty much most of the game, but there were definitely uh, times where Team Tyrael could have kind of capitalized on mm. big moors or good engagements. But yeah, Popo Please have played this game really well. It's just that they had they picked the, the bright wing. I mean, I, you know, I, I feel that... 
Material could have done much better if they'd actually picked up the Uther instead. Preventing Popo, please, from getting that Divine Shield. Because that Divine Shield has just been so crucial in some of these fights. Just protecting the damage dealers like Valor from uh, continuing to, uh, to continue to lay out the damage in those fights, particularly from that strafe. Yeah, especially with the Illidan on your team as well, because they can really do work. Because like, Illidan just gets low all the time, and he just gets mm. back up to full health and get that Metamorphosis and the yeah. Divine Shield with his passive going. That's it. So it looks like Popo Please are choosing to play this game a little bit safe, and they're going to try and take out that top lane as well. I mean, they, they're really playing secure. Oh, I'm just looking at that. It was nice to go to basically rendering all the uh, structures useless for the moment. Not going to be able to really defend. The Dark Terror seeds have gone down. Look at that bottom. Look at that tower there. It's being taken out by the seeds rapidly, and they just can't respond to it. They can't push in this four level difference with the Garden Terror. I mean, they've. They've really got to start looking at it. Oh, and the mole comes down. Another great mole. They need to capitalize on this and jump on those assassins at the back. Choosing not to and just choosing to disengage. Oh, yeah, that's a great ring of frost. Are we going to see Felstead? Fulfins, we do. Metamorphosis goes out. Valor might be in a bit of trouble because Illidan can follow up on that. Arthur's also in a bit of trouble as well. This could be a nice turning moment. Still in a hard spot. Arthur's going to fall as well. Illidan, however, got no support up there, but he can't even get the kill on. The seeds have to come back. Jane is there. Illidan has fallen. Jane is there now to try and take out get Uther, but oh, we're going to see Mirrodin fall as well. We're going to see Brightwing try and fall into the fray, but she will possibly fall from this as well, seeing how it goes. No, and we're going to see Uther finally fall. He's level 20, however, and Redemption has been taken, so he's going to be back up in a moment. The Garden Terror has fallen for the moment, and we're just going to see uh, Boki and Kathina try and get out of this. Oh, I feel, it was a bit, I feel they really should fall up on this. They've got the advantage here. They've got no real damage at the moment, and they should be able to get those kills on. Especially on Stitch, he's yeah. going to have got the slow one. Oh, Good blink. Ball. He might be able to get away. Oh, no, nah. The extended it's range on that Blizzard <laughs> is just... It's just very good. Alright, this was actually a key moment right now for our Team Tyrell. They can potentially get back in the game from this. I mean, it's still going to be hard for them. But they've got to pick up these seeds, prevent Popo Please from um, getting back into the game. Sorry, prevent from at least getting Garden Terror. And then from here, they've got to... They've got to start putting pressure on those lanes. They've got no pressure on any of the lanes. This is such a hard fight for them. Yeah. I mean, that team fight they had just at their top key was played really, really well, especially by Jaina and uh, Illidan. Illidan. I mean, Jaina got a really big ring of frost on mm. Fullstead, and I think it was maybe Uther, I believe, which yep. was really good. And then Illidan was kind of just causing chaos on the back three, and they couldn't do anything about it, so it was really well played. Yeah, they really split them up, split up their attention with that. It was a yep. good mole. They removed the front line. I think um, they could have been a little bit stronger had they gone in straight away after the mole had gone off. Yep, yep. But um, yeah, but this, they're they're back into the game now. However, look at this up the top. Zagar is in a bad spot. Arthur's going to come and lock her in place, and he's going to do a lot of damage. The shock and awe comes out. The mole just a little bit too late, and they're going to pick up a free camp behind that. Hero killing camp, so... They might get Brightwing here as well if she doesn't teleport out. She is trying to do the teleport. She just... just <laughs> gets away. But look at that. The Siege Giants in the mid lane are already picking up that camp. They've got Siege Giants coming down the top lane. Zagara's gone. That's it. Uh, this is... Not a good spot. They're just, they can just push in now, really, and have it yeah, easily Yeah, too much it. pressure on their base to defend it now, I believe. That's it. Does they have got the Terror, and they are doing a smart move here. Oh, they are hook. using it to defend. Stitches has Jaina in her. In him, sorry. Yep. Spits him out into the middle of his team. Really well played. Yeah, look at that. She bursted down. All the elements coming out. This Vine Shield has gone on Uther. We are seeing Stitches taking a lot of damage, but that, that heals from Uther just so good. And we're going to see Illidan and Jaina fall from that front confrontation. Brightwing possibly might be next to go. To be honest, I don't think it really matters right now because there is so much damage being put into that core that they could just turn around and end it. We will see a fall now come out from, um, from the Garden Terror. And they're just going to jump on Mirrodin now. He's got nothing. Uh, by taking the Haymaker and not the Avatar, he just doesn't have any real sustain in these fights. Uh, Avatar is a really key talent. That's it, especially, if, you, well, especially if you're doing that war, that tank role, which is what yeah. Mirrodin does most of the time, or should be doing most of the time. And we're just going to see Popo, please, jump on that core. That is, that is game one for the Might of NZ Challenge Tournament. And that is going to Popo, please. Team 2 will be blocked into the loser's bracket.